the best female professional golfer ever from Southern Illinois in the metro area? You would be correct if you said Nancy Scranton. The Central Illinois native was dominant as an amateur, winning the Southern Illinois Championship several times, the Illinois Women's Championships. Nancy's first win on the LPGA Pro Tour was a major, the 1991 Du Maurier Classic in Canada, where she played the final seven holes in six under par. She won the following year at the Los Coyotes LPGA Classic. After full shoulder reconstruction, she won a third LPGA title at the 2000 Subaru uh, memorial in Naples. The same year she qualified for the United States Solheim Cup team in Scotland against the European team. In 2004, get this, 2004, after two top 10 finishers on the LPA tour, she finished fourth and sixth, she gave birth to twins. Whew, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Uh, <laughs> After retiring from the LPGA Tour, she's been a stalwart on the Legends Tour, which is the senior tour, where she's won five times. Nancy was a mainstay on the Legends Tour Team USA at the Honda Cup competitions. She helped the USA win six times. Most recently, in 2014, she's the only female golfer to be inducted into the University of Kentucky Sports Hall of Fame. She says she's playing more tennis now than golf, so if she casually asks you, you want to play a set or two, be aware. She made the trip tonight from Florida to be with us. She complains it's too cold here, and we are honored, though, nonetheless, to add St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame to her great resume. <laughs> Nancy Scranton. Jim Holder will do the interview. Nancy, I've always heard that only God could hit a one iron. Is that true? I tried. <laughs> she tried. <laughs> well, Nancy, first of all, congratulations going into the uh, St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you. It's uh, quite an honor, and um, I'm really happy to uh, to be here and listen to all the stories about basketball. At it's really, uh, <laughs> it reminds me of growing up here because it was all about basketball. Living in Florida, you don't hear it much. So uh, it was, it's really fun to be here. When you talk about uh, being local, Centralia, and everybody knows probably at one time or another, somebody's been at, at a basketball tournament in Centralia, Illinois. And, and uh, you played in some, and, and you were a jock, right? As yes, I was. As a kid. <laughs> And uh, my friends over there, uh, I was very fortunate that uh, growing up, it was kind of cool to play sports. And uh, my friends are all over there. And in fact, uh, one of my best friend's mother, Faye, is here. And she started me playing softball. Like when I talked to you, <laughs> Rita, earlier, that I love softball. But uh, unfortunately, it was hard to make a living doing that. So, But uh, my friend's mother started me probably when I was five or six. And... Uh, she was a tough one, <laughs> but I learned a lot from her. And, you know, I played sports with all my friends, and then sure. I ended up playing golf, starting golf a little bit late. But it was all the other sports that I think I learned my competitive spirit. Do you have brothers and sisters or whatever at home? I have one sister, and she's 10 years older than I am, and she was a very good golfer, so I think that's why I resisted playing golf for a while. So yeah. that, um, she, <laughs> she was really good. There's a name that uh, people certainly recognize, Tom Wargo from uh, Centralia. Um, Tom, one of the individuals that down the line that maybe kind of helped get that golf club in uh, Nancy Scranton's hands? I started playing um, when I was 15 or 16, which is relatively late. That considering, is. Yeah, considering I ended up doing it as a profession. Um, but I was ready to do it. My father played golf and was a good golfer. My sister was a good golfer, and I think they wanted me to play, but I was more interested in swimming, softball, you know, all the other sports. Um, but when Nancy Lopez was a rookie, that's when I got interested and thought, I, I think I might be able to do this. And um, I think I was 19 when Tom moved to Centralia and he started working with me. And he was a little um, unorthodox, maybe. I don't know if you know Tom very well. But yeah. <laughs> our lessons were interesting. Yeah. Um, college played a, a factor, or at least maybe helping establish 
putting you in that role where you could maybe join the LPGA. Yeah, I, uh, I went to Florida State. I wanted to go south. I think everybody felt like, you know, you got to go somewhere you can play all year long. And, and I learned a lot there, but I was kind of homesick and not that happy. So I sat out a year, and then I ended up going to the University of Kentucky. It was funny. I went on a recruiting trip, and uh, the coach, I, I don't know, she must have known me, but she took me to a basketball game at Rupp Arena, and I'm like, where do I sign? So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was it was a it was a nice move and um, and then I thought I need to try to qualify for the tour and and uh, as soon as I was out of school I qualified and did it and I think uh, a little bit of ignorance is bliss I think I think I'll try it and it was 24 years later. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ron mentioned your first tournament win, a major. Yeah, I believe I, uh, me. Yeah, it was um, it was quite fun. Um, <laughs> I can say. I had been in contention several times, but um, I uh, had played okay the first two days, and then I shot uh, 64 on Saturday to get myself into the final group, and um, and kind of was just hanging in there, and then got hot on the back nine, and ended up, like you said, I was six under on my last seven holes, so I ended up winning, and uh, it was happened to just be a major, which was which was fun, the Canadian Open. Well, I had uh, several people locally when they knew that I had the opportunity to visit with you this evening before this great crowd uh, to, to mention the fact that um, you, once you were part of the LPGA, really helped establish it and enforce that. And Jay Randolph, by the way, sends uh, his best. And he said, Jimmy said, uh, Nancy did a great deal for the LPGA. Just was that kind of part of your makeup that you said, yeah, I, they need something? Well, I think um, I was very fortunate when I was playing. Um, I got to play with some of the great ones that came ahead of me. I got to play with Kathy Whitworth, and you know, I was out there with Pat Bradley and, and Nancy Lopez, obviously. And, and um, you know, we worked hard to get our names out there and, and, and get people interested in the LPGA Tour because it was always like, if we can get people there, they're going to love it. And, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to play for a long time where I ended up playing with Lorena Ochoa and, and you know, some of the players now, Michelle Wee, who are still playing. And, and so I got, to, I got to play with a lot of players, but, you know, it, 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 it takes a lot of work. You're right, to get, to get people to come out, but once they get out there, they, they have a lot of fun and they enjoy the tour. So, you know, it's just, I think it's just what we all did. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that many of you on, maybe on Monday morning, having your two ovaries and hash browns and going over uh, the Monday morning paper uh, as far as who won tournaments, et cetera. And you look at the LPGA, Nancy, and quite honestly, it's like nobody can pronounce anybody's name. Um, how, how has that, or how did that go with the veterans like yourself, as we saw the Asians, really make a major impact on the LPGA? It's, um, it's changed the face of the tour a lot, and I think a lot of that comes from um, the technology, too, because um, a lot of the players weren't as strong, but with the new ball, the new clubs, the hybrids and everything, right. and it changed the, the face of the tour. and, and um, the countries, some of the South Korea is where a lot of these girls are coming from, and the country is really puts a lot of money in it. And if they have any aptitude when they're younger, they really they support them. And so, even when I retired, which was in '08, um, there were a lot of South Koreans on there. And so, that's where the tour's going. And and you know, as he said earlier, I had I had twins when I was just a little bit older than most people, and um, I continued to play for a few years, but it. it it became more difficult because a lot of our tournaments were overseas now instead of domestic. And you either travel with your children overseas or you leave them at home. Um, and I think it's making it more difficult for moms to play on tour. Um, you know, a lot of, when I played, my, I, I played until my kids were almost four, and we had a daycare on tour, and it was great, and there were maybe 20, 25 kids a week, and it was really fun for them. Um, but now it's it's much more difficult because there are so few domestic events. Nancy, do you feel that the the growth uh, of young ladies in America uh, are going to be able to make or help the LPGA grow? 
Well, I, th I think it's just become a, such a global tour. This is, if you're a professional golfer, this is where you want to play. This is where the money is. This is where all the best competition is. So if you're in Europe or you're in Asia, you want to come here and play. So, I mean, we've got great players. Look at Lexi Thompson. I mean, uh, there are so many really good American women, but you're competing against the rest of the world. For the uh, ladies on the LPGA Tour, and you look at the winnings on Monday morning, and you see, and you look at what the, uh, at the purses were, um, generally, they're what? Maybe a tenth of? Maybe, maybe not even that. Uh, how has that gone over, or is that going to change at all? And, and along with that, of course, the purses go up if the television is there. Well, that's where it is. It's, it's, um, it's all about the television. Um, we always, it's always been that way when I was playing. And, um, you know, it was maybe a third at best. Uh, it's, it's television. The, the PGA Tour gets paid to be on television. We have to pay to be on television. Um, and a lot of that is the Tiger effect. It's changed over the last, you know, 20 years with Tiger playing because they've made right. so much money. Yeah. And he's maybe making coming back. He, he made it through four rounds last week out in San Diego. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, any particular, uh, you mentioned, of course, winning the, uh, your first win was a major. But uh, any other thing that we might get a chuckle out of that you can think of uh, while you were playing and saying, oh, I don't know if I ever want anybody to know that that happened to me. Um, anything <laughs> like that in terms of your experience of all those years on the LPGA? Uh, well, there are, there are a few. <laughs> I probably can't talk about some of them, but there was, um, <laughs> I play, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to qualify for the Solheim Cup when right. I was um, um, in 2000, and my friends who are here tonight were there, and um, we were in Scotland in October, so surprise, it was raining um, and cold, and um, my caddy gave me the towel and the umbrella, and he was doing something else, so I walked up to the green, and I, I bent over to mark my ball and the towel fell onto the ball <laughs> on the green yeah. and it was a bit of a, a shock you know it's match play and you I've got sure. a towel line on my ball so um anyway it was it became quite the joke and and they were there watching me in Scotland and I was just uh, starting to date my now husband father of my twins and um, he was actually worked for the media and he was in the media tent going what's she done now <laughs> um, anyway uh, my partner and I both hit it close and I got a shot penalty but my partner made the putt so we won the hole so it really didn't matter but it was it was quite a joke they took the towel the rest of the week and took pictures of it all over Scotland <laughs> naturally yeah uh any thoughts about the, the times you had the opportunity to play here in St. Louis? Yeah, I, um, I played a bit. Um, I won the, the St. Louis uh, Metro, I think, a couple years. And, and unfortunately, I, I didn't play golf until I was 16. So by the time I was you know, playing a lot, I was in college, and then I turned professional. So I, I didn't have all the experiences I think a lot of, a lot of people have. But... Um, there's so many great golf courses, and, and uh, we felt very fortunate to, um, to grow up playing all the sports, really. And, and I think that's what this is, you know, it brought back. And I, I was hardly even thinking about golf while I was listening to everything. Like do, I said, I, I played Do you encourage against, that yeah, yeah, absolutely. for the mom and dads out there that absolutely. have somebody play more than one sport? I, my son is a really good soccer player, and I have a problem because they play 10 months a year, and I played four different sports, and I feel like I learned something with that, and I think it's a problem, but it's kind of this society now, yeah. but uh, I, I have to say I, I learned so much playing basketball and volleyball and softball that I think I transferred it. Yeah, there's no question about it, and uh, it's great for the U.S. being a part of those Solheim teams. Uh, just finally, the, uh, the kids, how, how are they? Are they golfers, the twins? Boy, girl, what are their names? They know how to play. Luke and Libby. Yeah, <laughs> Luke and Libby. It, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, they, they do know how to play. They know how to play. They're not really golfers, yeah. but they know how to play. And when does your uh, schedule begin on the Legends Tour? We just have a few tournaments, and it's going to be later in the year. So their first year that we're going to have U.S. Senior Women's Open this year. So Are you getting that crossed. itch? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Let's give her a big hand, Nancy Scranton. St. Louis Sports Hall of Famer.